well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's like it's an alien civilization might just view us as like a bug infestation. Right. You know, it's like, hey, we left that planet, it was fine, now it's got a bunch of bugs, just go fumigate it, you know. In the past couple of years, Elon Musk has made waves in the world of space exploration with SpaceX. From Falcon 1 to the Dagon crew missions, he's turned the concept, entire concept of how we've explored space in the past upside down. And well, he's done it again. He's now announced that SpaceX will finally be launching a new starship to orbit in June 2023. And this one ship might just change everything. Join us as we explore details about the Starship mission and the leaps SpaceX is taking to take space exploration to the next level. Elon Musk, the visionary CEO of SpaceX, has unveiled the much-anticipated new Starship rocket. Set to launch to orbit in June 2023, this state-of-the-art spacecraft promises to redefine our capabilities beyond Earth's atmosphere. With a payload capacity ranging from 250 to 300 tons in expendable mode, the new Starship represents a significant advancement in spacefaring technology. Arguably the most interesting part of the whole thing is that the specifications of the new Starship bear similarities to the legendary Mighty Sea Dragon, a concept from the 1960s. Led by Robert Truax at Aerojet, the mighty Sea Dragon aimed to be a massive, two-stage, sea-launched, super-heavy lift launch vehicle. With a projected height of 400 feet and a diameter of 75 feet, it was envisioned as one of the largest rockets ever conceived. While there have been several hundred types of rockets in the past, what set the mighty Sea Dragon apart was its particularly unconventional launch method. The rocket would be floated in the ocean, presenting a unique approach to space launch, which usually would happen off of land. There were several potential advantages to launching the rocket from the sea. One key benefit was the ability to leverage the expansive water surface area to facilitate the launch process. The vastness of the ocean would offer a lot more flexibility in terms of launch angles and trajectories, allowing for greater maneuverability during ascent, which is something that can make a world of difference. But that's not all. The sea launch concept also reduced the need for complex ground infrastructure, such as launch pads, which could result in cost savings and increased launch frequency. This would mean that a lot more money frees up to pour into research for the actual rocket itself, instead of the launch site. The floating launch platform for the Sea Dragon would have been a specially designed structure capable of withstanding the forces and stresses during launch. This platform would provide a stable base for the rocket ensuring a smooth and controlled liftoff. When the liftoff is more stable, chances for things to go wrong during the initial couple of minutes go down by a lot, which is always the goal. The design of the Mighty Sea Dragon rocket included a single engine in each stage and used liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen as propellants. This choice of propellants is common in many rockets because of their high energy density and efficiency. Liquid hydrogen is a cryogenic fuel that is stored and transported at extremely low temperatures. It is known for its high specific impulse, which refers to the efficiency with which a rocket engine converts propellant into thrust. The use of liquid hydrogen allows for a higher exhaust velocity, resulting in more efficient propulsion and greater overall performance. Liquid oxygen, on the other hand, serves as the oxidizer in the rocket engine. It reacts with the liquid hydrogen during combustion, providing the necessary oxygen for the chemical reaction that generates thrust. Liquid oxygen is also stored and transported at very low temperatures, making it suitable for use in cryogenic rocket engines. The burn time for this engine would have been approximately 260 seconds, which is just how long the engines in each stage of the Mighty Sea Dragon would be firing continuously. During this time, the engines consume the liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen propellants, converting them into high-pressure gases that are expelled through the rocket nozzle to produce the thrust that's needed for liftoff. The burn time is an important consideration in rocket design because it decides the duration of each stage's propulsion and contributes to the overall performance and trajectory of the rocket. By using liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen propellants, the Mighty Sea Dragon aimed to achieve high performance and efficiency, maximizing the thrust generated by the engines while minimizing the weight of the propellant carried. 
This combination of propellants, along with the single-engine configuration, was intended to deliver the necessary power for the rocket's ascent and payload delivery to orbit. While the mighty Sea Dragon generated interest and excitement within the aerospace community, the project ultimately remained a conceptual design study and was never actually realized. Even though there were lots of promising advantages of sea launch, including the potential for reduced costs and increased launch flexibility, practical challenges and constraints likely contributed to the fact that it was never really brought to life. Factors such as logistical complexities, the need for extensive offshore infrastructure, and the practicality of recovering and refurbishing the rocket after launch may have posed significant obstacles. But you see, a lot of the problems that might have been issued back in the 60s, when this design was initially conceptualized, aren't really issues in today's world. That's why Starship has been based on some of the key ideas from the mighty Sea Dragon, and this revolutionary spacecraft is set to launch as early as June 2023. Both Starship and the mighty Sea Dragon belong to the category of super heavy lift launch vehicles designed to carry large payloads into orbit. Regardless of their temporal and technological differences, they share several interesting similarities. But the biggest one is that both the mighty Sea Dragon and the Starship are designed with reusability as a key feature. This means that they are intended to be fully reusable, enabling them to return to Earth after launching their payloads into orbit. Reusability offers the potential to significantly reduce the costs associated with space travel by enabling the reuse of major components. That means that not only will it be a lot more justifiable to spend money on them in the first place, but because of the reusability factor, there can be several launches in a limited time frame. This would ultimately also mean a lot more research can be done, a lot faster. This is something that's always been a pretty major problem when it came to space exploration. Scientists would spend decades planning out a mission just because they only had one shot at getting it all right. With rockets becoming reusable and cheaper, they can speed things up more than ever before. But despite these similarities, there are notable differences between the Mighty Sea Dragon and the Starship too. The Mighty Sea Dragon was designed as a two-stage rocket, and while the Starship consists of two stages, the Super Heavy Booster and the Starship spacecraft. The Super Heavy Booster is only really there to provide the initial thrust to lift the Starship off the ground, taking advantage of multiple engines to achieve the necessary power. In terms of payload capacity, the mighty Sea Dragon aimed for an impressive capacity of 550 tons, which would be amazing even in today's time. In comparison, the Starship, in its current design, targets a payload capacity of 100 tons to remain fully reusable. Any more than that, and this goal would have to be abandoned. But this isn't really going to be the case forever. SpaceX has ambitious plans for a future iteration of the Starship that is projected to exceed a payload capacity of 1,000 tons per launch, so it will have a major potential for large-scale cargo missions, possibly even enough to take over the entire industry. But that's not all. SpaceX is aiming to take over space station construction too. The SpaceX Starship's potential to revolutionize space station construction lies in its innovative design and utilization of advanced engineering and manufacturing techniques. Unlike traditional spacecraft and rockets, Starship incorporates several key features that contribute to its cost-effectiveness and efficiency. One of the standout features is Starship's ability to use heavier and more affordable materials. Traditionally, space station construction has relied on lightweight materials that are costly to produce and transport into space. However, Starship's design allows for the use of denser and more readily available materials, such as stainless steel. Stainless steel offers several advantages, including its high strength-to-weight ratio, durability, and cost-effectiveness compared to other materials commonly used in space applications. This choice of material allows for significant cost savings in the construction process, making space infrastructure more financially viable. Plus, Starship's advanced manufacturing techniques contribute to its cost-effective and efficient construction. SpaceX uses cutting-edge manufacturing technologies, 
including rapid prototyping, precision engineering, and streamlined assembly processes. These techniques make it possible for the production of Starship components to be done with reduced time and cost, ensuring a more efficient manufacturing workflow. The use of advanced manufacturing techniques also makes it possible to have a higher degree of automation in the production process. Automation not only reduces labor costs, but also enhances precision and consistency in component manufacturing, leading to a much higher quality output at the end of the day. Plus, this way they can focus all of their manpower on things that actually need human attention, making the entire process go a lot faster overall. This streamlining of manufacturing processes and increased automation ultimately contribute to the cost-effectiveness and efficiency of space station construction using Starship, which is Elon Musk's goal, and he's super-focused on making these goals a reality. SpaceX has gone through a series of flight tests to make sure everything is going to go exactly to plan. These tests are instrumental in assessing the spacecraft's capabilities, refining its design, and validating its performance in real-world conditions. With test flights, SpaceX aims to gather vital data that will inform further enhancements and ensure the success of Starship's goals. The flight tests conducted by SpaceX span across different altitudes, with both low-altitude and high-altitude flights. Low-altitude flights serve as initial demonstrations of the spacecraft's fundamental capabilities, allowing SpaceX to evaluate its control systems aerodynamic properties, and overall flight dynamics. These tests involve launching the Starship prototype to a relatively modest altitude, typically several kilometers above the ground, to assess its maneuverability, stability, and reusability aspects. Conducting these tests is a lot cheaper than just trying it out with the main spacecraft. And if there are any unexpected problems that come up, this is the time to fix them. That way, when the real launch happens, the scientists at SpaceX won't have to worry about the very basic things going wrong, which is what sometimes tends to happen to these spacecraft. But they don't stop there. As the development progresses, SpaceX undertakes more ambitious high-altitude flights to push the boundaries of the Starship's performance. These flights involve launching the spacecraft to significantly greater altitudes, potentially reaching the edge of space or even beyond. By subjecting the Starship to more demanding conditions, SpaceX can thoroughly evaluate its systems, subsystems, and overall flight behavior in environments that closely resemble those encountered during actual missions. Sometimes, these even include situations that past spacecraft couldn't make it through, so if those situations were to arise in the open space again, they'd know that Starship would have a much higher chance of making it out of the ordeal safely. Through these comprehensive flight tests, SpaceX can collect invaluable data on various aspects of the Starship's performance. This data encompasses parameters such as ascent and descent profiles, engine performance, aerodynamic stability, thermal management, avionics functionality, and landing procedures. With all of that in hand, SpaceX's engineers and technicians identify areas for improvement, refine the spacecraft's design, and fine-tune critical systems to optimize its overall performance. And they're not coming in slow on these. Starship SN1 marked an important milestone as the first full-scale prototype of the spacecraft. Although it didn't perform a high-altitude flight, it provided invaluable insights into the structural integrity and manufacturing techniques of the Starship design. The subsequent test flights, starting with Starship SN8, aimed to push the boundaries of altitude and demonstrate the spacecraft's aerodynamic capabilities. SN-8's flight was particularly ambitious, reaching an impressive altitude of 12.5 kilometers. While it performed a successful ascent and controlled descent, the landing attempt resulted in an explosion upon touchdown. This test highlighted the challenges of transitioning from a high-altitude flight to a safe and controlled landing. Starship SN9 followed a similar trajectory, aiming to further refine the spacecraft's performance. However, it also experienced a landing failure, resulting in an explosion. These test flights demonstrated the complexity of the landing phase and the need for continuous improvements in the spacecraft's control systems. With Starship SN10, 
Progress was made as the spacecraft successfully completed its high-altitude flight and managed to land. However, a few minutes after touchdown, there was an explosion. Despite the post-landing issue, the successful landing itself was a significant achievement, and for the most part, this test flight was a success. But they needed real success. So, they kept going. The journey of test flights led to a breakthrough with Starship SN15. This flight marked a significant milestone as it successfully completed its high-altitude ascent and demonstrated a controlled landing without any subsequent explosion. The SN-15 test provided vital data on the spacecraft's aerodynamics, propulsive landing capabilities, and structural integrity. Each test flight has played a crucial role in advancing the development of Starship, enabling SpaceX to try again and improve upon the design with each iteration. While the earlier flights encountered landing challenges and explosive outcomes, they served as valuable learning experiences, contributing to the refinement and success achieved with subsequent flights. So even the flights that would technically count as a fail ended up being successful as a learning opportunity. But all of this isn't just for internal use. The flight tests serve as a crucial validation step allowing SpaceX to assess whether the Starship meets its performance targets and safety requirements to even qualify to launch. That's not all, though. In addition to its civilian applications, the remarkable capabilities of Starship have even got the attention of national security organizations, including the U.S. Department of Defense. The spacecraft's advanced design and impressive performance characteristics make it a potential mobility platform that could support a range of national security requirements. This means that Starship won't just be used for civilian interests, but also for defense objectives. You see, Starship's significant payload capacity and versatility make it very well suited for the rapid deployment of military satellites. The Department of Defense heavily relies on satellite systems for most of its operations. Starship could provide a cost-effective and efficient way of getting through the day-to-day -day needs all uninterrupted and with enhanced situational awareness for military operations. Considering NASA does already work with SpaceX, would it really be that much of a stretch to see the Department of Defense making use of everything SpaceX brings to the table? Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and like always, we'll see you in the next one.